In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to examine the math.sign expression. This is a little bit of JavaScript that allows you to have properties oscillate in a regular sine wave. We're going to explore what it means, what it does, how to control it. Ideally, by the end of this, you learn about math, expressions, After Effects, and each other. I'm Evan Abrams, and this is math.sign in After Effects. So before we open After Effects, let's get into just what math.sign is. Now certainly it's an expression. We'll just type capital M and then A-T-H dot S-I-N and then some parentheses here, parentheses, into an expression window. But what does that mean? If we hope to make use of a thing, we first need to understand the thing or just copy and paste and really hope that we uh, works out. So math.sign is the trigonomic function sign. You might know this from math class when you're asked to calculate an angle of a thing, or maybe from science where it's used to model waves for light and sound. And for us, it's that same function. It's that same sine wave function. So looking at this thing as an expression, we need to understand the kind of input it's gonna take and to expect the kind of output it's going to give us. Inputs go here in the argument zone in between those parentheses, and really we just put in a number. And the output we get will be the sign of that number. So if we put in zero or one or two or 11, then we get the sign of that number that we put in. The number that we're putting in is treated as a radian. Now a radian is a, another measure of angle, so similar to degrees. So you could have, you know, this 90 degree angle or this however many radian angle that is. And in fact, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians or 3.14159 and so on radian. Uh, more on that later. That'll be important to know later. The number that it spits out, the output that we're going to get after putting in the radians, is going to be a regular wave wave oscillating between minus one and one, or negative one and one. If we want this to change, if we want to use this as an expression to generate some movement, we're going to have to use a value in that argument that changes over time. And I would recommend using uh, the word time. We've covered the time property on other tutorials, so if you want to read about that. But the big thing about it to know is that this word will now become whatever the time is in seconds on whatever frame we're looking at. But taking the sign of the time alone is not super useful. We need more than just oscillating between minus one and one. We should amplify that. So if we modify this by another number, we multiply this whole thing, then we're getting something that we can probably use. And this multiplication that we're doing to it, this increasing the distance away from zero, is what we call the amplitude. But I think we need more control than that. It's not enough to say how much it oscillates, how tall this wave gets. I want to be able to say, when is it oscillating? How often? You know, what is the frequency of oscillations that are going to happen? How many times per second does this wave repeat? Now, I could make it repeat once per second exactly by multiplying the time here by two times pi. If we want this wave to repeat twice every second, then we would just multiply this result here by two. So we just slip a little two in there and then it's working out. Alternatively, we could describe the way this wave is repeating as having a, a period, a set distance distance between the zero and the zero when it repeats the wave. What is that distance in time? Well, we would call that the period. So in this case, we're looking at a one second period. And if we want to control the wave using that, we would just multiply here in inside the brackets by one over whatever we want the period to be. So if we want the period to be three seconds, we'd multiply it by one over three. And thanks to how math works, that's what we end up with. But I think it's time to open up After Effects and actually use this to make something. All right, as promised, After Effects is open. Let's get into some examples. The first thing I wanna show you is making something's position change in that lovely sine wave. This is where the rubber really meets the road and we have to actually type things into an expression window. So I've got a composition open, I've got a shape layer, and I've got a null object. I have parented my shape layer to the null object so that the position is zero, zero when it's right here. This will make the numbers a little bit easier for us to understand. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on position, and it's time to start typing. We know because this is position, the end of the expression needs to be x comma y. That's 
the end goal. We want to fill something in for the first part of this property and fill something in for the second part. And I think we want this to just go up and down, just oscillate up and down. So the X can be equal to whatever the value is here. So in square brackets, put a zero, meaning it'll always reference the first part here for X. There are some other variables I'd like to put in, such as A for amplitude that we talked about. So let's make the amplitude 240. Let's make the frequency, let's say F equals 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times a second. So I'll close that out. So we have amplitude, frequency. Now I think we need to write the real thing. So we're going to say Y equals math dot sign and our little argument zone, parentheses. We're going to multiply all of this by the amplitude, close that out. And inside the brackets, like we've done, we are going to type time times two times, or multiply, however you say that, math.pi. That's how we get the pi in here anytime we want it. And then times f for the frequency. And cross your fingers, we've done it all right. Oh, it didn't make a noise. So we hit play and we can see it's oscillating. Look at it go, which is not super exciting. If we look at, we click this button here, we can go to the graph editor and we can enjoy looking at the value graph and we can see these oscillations happening right here in the graph editor. If you look at a speed graph, it looks like this, just a bunch of bumps, but they're all perfect and regular bump. Now, you're probably saying, well, Evan, I could do this with a loop and uh, maybe some keyframes. Well, that's true, but the purpose here is so you can use this to build and hopefully do more interesting things with your own creative mind. Something I will say that this does a lot better than keyframes are things like decay. So we could have this uh, decay or uh, increase by, say, multiplying this by time again inside the brackets. And now what's going to happen is it's going to go slow, fast, 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 which is something that is a little bit difficult to do with keyframes. We're able to do this using the power of expression. If you want to go more in depth, I would recommend you read uh, all the articles by Dan Eberts. Head on over to his website. Links to that in the description. The man is a genius and very generous uh, with his knowledge. And his site continues to be invaluable. So we've got this thing oscillating. A problem you might run into is if you start moving this layer forward or backward in time, you'll notice that it doesn't move its position. You know, it's not relative to the start of the layer. So if you want to make that happen, you can hit T and type in a new variable time uh, minus in point and close that out. And then just change the time in here to be that T, meaning we're taking the time we're at, say six seconds, and subtracting the current time of the in point, which is around two here, six minus two is four, so we get the value that would have happened at four, meaning we can move this forward and backward, and we kind of have our, our oscillations baked into the layer rather than being relative to the composition time. So that's how we would apply this to position. What if we wanted to apply this to, I don't know, scale? So we go over to the scale here. Here's an example with scale. I'm just copying and I am pasting because I am lazy, we don't need to type it out again. We paste it here on the scale. What's going on? Well, it's doing pretty much the same thing because if we want, say, the uh, percentage to change the same, we would need to have the same variable here and the output, so y comma y. So we can probably get rid of the x part. We don't need that, make that go away. So now it's getting larger and smaller. You know, And if we look at its graph, we have a look at the graph going on here. You can see that it's going up and down and it's dipping here into the negatives. And that is because we oscillate between positive and negative of the amplitude. It's not uh, going down to 100 and back up, it's actually going into the negative. So if we had something on here, it would be flipping. So that's something to be aware of when you use this on scale. So now let's apply this to the opacity. So we could go in here, we could toggle the opacity, stick it on there, paste, and just like we had to modify the output, the output really only needs to be the single variable, the y equals math.sign, etc. So now we have this interesting kind of stoplight blinking, which is great, everybody likes a blinking light, but if we go into the graph, this graph looks different. This looks like a square graph. Now that's happening because we're pushing the values above and below where we want to be. So I would adjust my amplitude down. Maybe we adjust it down to 100. So we're going from 100 to negative 100. That means that we're getting half the wave because the rest of it goes below zero and opacity cannot hold values below zero. So maybe we set this to 50 
and then we go y plus 50. So then we end up with it oscillating from 100% to zero on and off like so. So sometimes you're gonna have to massage the outputs a little bit depending on the kind of property that you're putting it on. Our final example, the last example, let's do a little bit more with the position. I'm gonna duplicate that so that we have position plus rotation. Now let's add some rotation to this. Now you can't really tell if this is rotating, so let's add a poly star to that. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees so it's pointing off to the side. So what I would like it to do is to point up when it's going up and then point down as it's going down. Like the arrow is pointing the direction it's going to go. So we go to the rotation, we hold down Alt, we paste. You know, this is the same thing from, uh, from the opacity. And the final thing is gonna be the Y, right? For the amplitude, let's make it 45. It's gonna go 45 degrees one way, 45 degrees the other. And what does that do? Well, this is not uh, what I was hoping. It is pointing up when it goes up, but it's, it's not exactly what I was hoping. So here I'm gonna talk about sine's uh, twin brother, cousin, I don't know. They're the same, but a little bit different. And really the difference is that sine begins its life at zero and then goes up and then down. Whereas cosine uh, begins its life at one then dips down to minus one and then back up. So if I type in math.cos here, C-O-S, now we're off to something. We dip, we dip. What I'll need to do here is to make sure that I can add my own value by adding the value there. So now, now it's pointing in the right direction to begin with. So there we go. Now it's pointing down, pointing up, pointing down, pointing up. So if we have a look at the graphs, making sure this little button here is on, we get the position, make sure this little button is on. We have, have a look at those in the graph editor you can see that the waves are offset from each other. So the peak of this one is at the middle point of this one. So that's how cos and sine can interact with each other. And even though I didn't mention it for the entire tutorial, uh, cos works exactly the same as sine. You know, the only difference is that it's offset. This has been Evan Abrams, talking about math.sign in After Effects. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to this channel. This is a great place to learn about After Effects, motion design, all that great stuff. New tutorials go up pretty regularly around here, so you should subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when that happens. If you've had any trouble understanding this stuff, please let me know in the comments. Ask questions and I'll try to answer them as best I can. If you'd like to get your hands on the project files, these examples that we worked on here, head on over to evanabrams.com or check out the links in the cards in the description to pick those up. If you're intimidated by expressions, it can be helpful to just dissect someone else's rather than starting fresh. If you have a question about After Effects in general or motion design, anything at all, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams. Give me a follow on there and we will uh, hang out on the internet. Thank you so much for watching. And if you subscribed, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again and have a nice day.